going to do more tile painting for our Southside Celebrates Sarasota's History Project. So some of you will get to paint today. If you've already painted, you may not, but that's okay. We're, we're trying to squeeze as many people in as we can to paint these murals. You've done the research already. You've written, we've got the writing out, so you can share with a partner today about the writing of your scene that you illustrated, and then we'll be painting on the tiles. We have definite a list of to-dos. So we have something in our science, social studies, reading, continue with your Ember work. And then we have research available. I do have desktops and I brought the computers on the, in the cart as well, okay? So Michael's going to call the people that he wants to work on. We're gonna to try to wrap up FST. I know Aiden's gonna work here. We are near the end of a major arts integration project. I'm a huge believer in arts integration, so that's kind of where I'm, where I want it. It's kind of where the springboard came from with this project. Southside's um, 90th birthday is next January. And so we were chatting about, do we just do Florida history, state symbols? We wanted to do some kind of painting with the students after they had researched and it just sort of evolved into let's do a whole series of murals and we're going to call them Southside Celebrate Sarasota's History. And so I had the students researching topics throughout Sarasota's history from the last 90 plus years. Bertha Potter Palmer, Spanish Point, Eugenie Clark, Mont Marine. Perfect. Nope, nope that's Sarasota nope. Memorial. It looks like that. It looks New College, Siesta Beach, West Coast, Nicolenda, Airport. There it is. There it is. We found it. Perfect. I saw the FST and Selby Gardens. Well, I like to learn about your history, where you live, and things like that. Student, a light blue. Because we've got turquoise and we've got pink, and we're going to have lavender. I wanted to do another project with YE, which is Youth Experience in the Arts. I work with YE nearly every year since it started about maybe eight years ago. And I wanted to work with Michael Trujillo, who is the artist I started working with a few years back. And this is his final year, so I wanted one more shot at that. Some people are going to be painting, painting, painting and, um, and like touching up their painting, like. Um, maybe going over with a different color or a color because you need two coats of paint to like because you're going to glaze the tiles so it might rub off. The first um, she said we have to review um, review and go study for the what we're painting she gave us things and review for them. Ne next, we, um, we, we type it down on the computers. And third, we start, um, we, th Michael got the paintings ready. Uh, Michael and Tendaka were um, showing us how to paint and we started painting the murals. And mine was um, Bobby Jones, um, um, muse um, the Ringling Art Museum, and Marina Jacks. My favorite one is Kazan because it seems so detailed and stuff and it seems like a really good place to live in. Well, one of the surprising things that some things in there, I've heard that like when I search, like there's gold, a lot of gold everywhere, real gold. I learned that um, you gotta, um, there's a lot of brushes and some do different jobs. Some are like, um, fixing some are shadowing brushes and a lot I learned a lot about that and how to um, mix colors it, it's been really educational and fun because we learned a lot of stuff about um, painting and, and how we to research and and really getting it down and then if you're not painting you'll do city of ember um, chapter 7 summary Right now, our fourth grade classes are doing a three-week unit of study on the book, The City of Ember. We are going deep into this novel, showing children how novels are written, how to really understand novel reading. It's different than picture book reading. See if you can skim and scan about. I think it might be on that page. Is it? 
It takes deep thought. It takes analyzing the characters, the setting, the plot. Um, so I'm working with my students right now. Every time we read a new chapter, we're doing summarizing. So she wanted to figure out what the, mes the message really was about. And did she do anything to, did she think of anything to help her figure that out? Yeah, she um, asked the, the boss of the messengers. One second. The boss. The boss, mm -hmm. Mrs. Cleary. Mm -hmm. so she asked her, and then what did she do on her own then? It's about they lived in a city, and around the city was darkness, and they didn't know what was along that darkness because they couldn't see anything. So they were like, they thought everything was going to run out because they had blackouts and blackouts. You couldn't see anything, so they were scared. The story is about um, there is the city that is um, that has no sunlight. They 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 only they go off for one generator. It's a very difficult skill for many of them who want to go on and on and on with all the details, yet I'm trying to help them focus on what we call the five W's, you know, the who, what, when, where, and why. Please get your bookmark with the five W's on, because if you use all of those parts while you're retelling the most important ideas, it'll give you a really good retelling, a really more detailed summary. To double check, remember how we underlined every part after you think you're done? Go back and underline all of the parts so you know you've got the who, the what, the when, the where, the why. So far, I think the theme of the book is that, like, sometimes, like, like when you imagine things, they could come true. Like how Lena thought, like, there would always be darkness in the world because they never had sunlight. Or the where. It was on Night Street, so we added that in. Okay, so if you don't have something here to answer every single question, that's what I want you to add. My room is a very busy, active world. I don't do a lot of at-your-seat kind of work, um, but we, we do some, of course, some whole group instruction, especially in math, things like that. But when it comes to the literacy block, the, the ELA block, we have a lot of kids that, that need different types of learning, different types of instruction. So in order to differentiate, I have made different activities where some can move through at quicker pacing, some need a little more of my guidance and support, and by having these different stations, as I call them, they get to move through these things and through their learning. The people that are on the computer were doing brain pop, we're like watch, watch this session, and then we take like two quizzes on it, the review and the classic. And we have to write down our um, grades, what we got, like five out of 10, six out of 10. And in the first time, if we get 10 out of 10, we get bubblegum and we don't have to do it the second time. Fourth graders love to chat. Uh, they are very, you know, apt to share their ideas. And that's another reason I do so much partner and peer work and table sharing is giving them that time to talk. You know, I'm very focused on what they talk about. I give them those parameters, but they, they do enjoy it. A lot of the kids love it. I do an awful lot with arts integration, but even using music and analyzing song lyrics. And they love something we call belly writing. We lay down and we listen and we visualize and they sketch it out. And then they share with their partners, you know, what, are, what did you see? What did you hear as you were listening to this piece? And then we go into writing about it. So sometimes that pre-thinking um, really helps them. Again, tying music, tying art into it really helps reach kids in so many ways. I like how she like um, gives us homework because if you do homework, then you get your practice. And then um, she makes us like read, but because reading is always a good thing to do. This is my 27th year of teaching. I can't see myself doing much of anything else. I've taught most grades from K through five and the preschoolers. And uh, the joyfulness of a fourth grader comes from their energy, their bubbliness, um, their excitement for learning. When they get it, they really get it. The light bulbs totally turn on and it's very fun to watch as an educator. The thing I admire about my teacher is that like even like she doesn't let us do like boring math. She lets us do like fun math, exciting. I like that she's really persistent and she gets everything done. 
It helps me learning better. She helps us learn a lot. The thing about Southside that connected so well with me, I know the importance of the arts in this school. I've worked with Mr. Dragon, our principal, before, and I know his love of the arts, and that is my heart. And when I saw an opportunity to try to come on board and try it out, I did, and I was successful, and I'm so thrilled because I'm really feeling like I'm able to reach every child in some way. I can, I can take them to places with arts integration that I just couldn't with textbooks or just even active board learning. I think it's really, really helped my kids and they seem to come every day eager to school. They come in the door smiling, they leave smiling. So I really think they're enjoying their year as much as I'm enjoying having the year with them.